Hello and welcome to the kickoff episode of FGTN, Fishing Gear and Tech News. I'm Alex Tim, a passionate angler, here to navigate the vast sea of fishing gear and tech every week with fresh topics, deep dives, and guests. Expect tight 30 to 60 minute episodes across all platforms. Live listeners, hit the chat. I'll incorporate your thoughts as we go along if I can. It's a fast pace, so keep them coming. Today, we're diving into iCast 2023. I've surfed the media waves post-show to bring you my top picks. The awards have gone out as well, and we'll talk about the best in show. Uh, Links to all gear will be below the post-show. Let's jump in. So if you're on YouTube, that's in the description. All other platforms, it'll be uh, below in there as well. I'll try to have a link in the comments as well. So starting out with what is iCast for those that do not know, let's go ahead and jump over. So this is the iCast fishing page. Uh, Just pulled it up, easiest way to explain it. They've already updated it. The show was two weeks ago. They already updated it to 2024. They're excited. So it takes place once every year, and it's really the flagship event for all vendors, manufacturers of fishing gear, from rods and reels to tackle to everything else in the book. Uh, They have this show every single year. Um, Typically, I think it is in Orlando. Uh, It was this year and it's going to be again next year. Um, And it's the premier showcase of all of those products. So I'll just play this so you can kind of see this video a little bit just to get a feel for. It's a huge conference. Hundreds and thousands of people and vendors are there. Um, It is not open to the public. So you have to have either media credentials and a media pass or you need to be a vendor or on a vendor staff in order to get into the event. That's why these media events are so cool when we can actually see what was there. I did not attend this year. I am planning on attending next year uh, to showcase a lot of the products, do some interviews and things while we're there. But that's what iCast is. They also do awards. I don't know if they have it on their page here, but they do awards every year for each category and they have a best in show. So I'm going to show you, I'll pause this video here. I'm going to show you what the best in show was for this year. So this won the entire show. This is the G2 Suka 2 Complete Carbon Handle. This is a rod handle. Like think about how simple of a product this is into win best of show. This is a absolutely impressive handle. Uh, If you check out this video, you can go to the website. I'll link it all down below. They don't, we don't know the pricing on it yet. It's not expected to be launched yet until Q4. Um, I'm probably not going to pick it up. Um, I'm a diehard ice fisherman, open water. I don't need the highest end stuff. I love getting excited about it. Maybe one day I'll get to try it out um, by going fishing with somebody that buys it, but I expect it to be incredibly expensive. So what is it? It's, it's carbon fiber handle. Um, You can get it in either the weave pattern that you can see here, or you can get it in the uh, just forged uh, material that they have up top. Here's what's incredible to me. Uh, Just kind of looking through the specs here. um, It is one ounce single piece construction. So think about that. This entire handle, which you can get for either spinning or uh, bait casting, it's one ounce, it's one piece. That is incredibly light, uh, supposedly incredibly uh, heavy duty. So you have that extreme strength to weight ratio. Uh, It's got the trigger handle on it. It's in both of the formats that I had said before. Um, So it's incredible. This thing looks sweet. Uh, Maybe if there's a store that carries it off to check it out, maybe one of you guys will go pick it up. I'll link it down below to their website here, but you can kind of see they've got that ergonomic trigger handle amplified handle sensitivity that they call it again here, the one ounce single piece construction. It's blow molded, uh, absolutely ridiculous. This is again, not something that I'm gonna buy. I didn't pick it out, but since it won the show, I figured I can't do this live stream without showing it to you guys. You can kind of see it comes in a fancy box and whatnot. Uh, Q4 2023 is the expected launch. And it says here, subject to change. So it could actually even be next year before it comes out. but. Pretty revolutionary uh, for handles for those guys that are looking for the best of the best could be interesting. So we're going to go through. I've got tabs across the top that I'm sure that you can see here. And we're going to go through. These are my picks of what I'm excited about and I think are uh, pretty impactful within the fishing space that was uh, launched and announced this year at the show. 
So this guy right here. So I know not everybody here is a kayak fisherman, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. But this is the Old Town Sportsman Big Water EPDL uh, 132 Fishing Kayak. So this is the Big Water. This is not the Autopilot. So the Big Water has uh, pedals on it. What's new this year, you'll see here in the middle, this little green thing. Let me see if they've got a better image of it on screen here. This guy right here. This is the EPDL drive. So it's essentially the big water kayak that exists today that you can see here, except it has an electronic PDL, an electronic pedal in it. You can use your normal feet pedaling. I wonder if they have a picture of the screen. It's powered by an amped outdoors battery. Uh, they should have a picture of the screen on here. Here we go. So you can see it is a digital screen. I don't, it's not going to probably make, allow me to go any bigger with it, but um, electronic screen on it. This thing I heard can get up to like six and a half, almost seven miles per hour on it, on that kayak empty on the max speed. Um, absolutely incredible. It's got a really long battery life. It does not have spot lock though. So to me, this is not something that I'll move to. I have the one th the uh, Old Town Autopilot 136 uh, with the trolling motor in it. It's got spot lock on it and everything. It doesn't go as fast as this one will. Uh, however, uh, it has spot lock. So I wish they would have put spot lock functionality in this, but either way, I think this is great for those people um, maybe that are fishing in the ocean, uh, that are fishing in heavier current that want that extra um, power. Um, also, the other benefit of this kayak that I think is pretty cool is that if your battery dies, you run out of juice, you can still pedal it. So you can still pedal if you want to. You can either do full pedal yourself, assisted pedal with the uh, electronic motor helping you out, or you can go ahead and have the electronic motor do all of the pedaling for you to move you forward at whatever speed that you want. So pretty incredible. Um, it is priced at $6,000, so definitely not a cheap kayak. I wish they would have uh, updated the kayak. They just put it into an old model kayak. I wish they would have came out with one, a new one or updated it in some way. Um, so kind of interesting. They're not selling the EPDL by itself. You have to buy it with the kayak. Uh, so that's what to know about that. Next up is the uh, flop box 10. So I've actually seen a couple people testing this out last year, but it did win an award this year uh, at, at iCast. So I wanted to go through it. I've been intrigued by it. Um, I love my Engel live bait coolers, but this thing looks interesting. What's, what's unique about it? It's a live bait cooler. What's unique about it is you have your uh, basket that's in there that your water and your bait go in. So think like your minnows and whatnot, right? Um, let me see if this will work. So you can see it's got the holes in it. So as you lift the basket up, of course, you're going to be able to get to your minnows and the water will stay in. But you can see here, what's cool about it is it's got a rope here that goes across the top of the basket. It attaches to the lid. So as you open the lid, it, it lifts the basket up a little bit to make it easier to get your minnows or whatever bait you have in there. In that lid, you can see, yes, that is an ice pack that you can freeze. So that way it stays cool. It's a roto molded body that you're looking at here. So it's heavy duty one, which is great. Um, it also is very well insulated because it's roto molded. And then with that ice pack up top, you can get a ton of time out in the beating sun, whether you're a kayak, open water, if you're fishing from the dock, wherever you are, um, you're gonna be able to keep your bait alive for quite a while. You've got a couple of cup holders here on the top and it does have a lithium ion rechargeable um, aerator on it as well. Um, I haven't tested it. I don't know how good it is. Early reviews seem to be that this thing is pretty awesome. Um, from a, it's got a USB-C charging port, uh, which is great. That's the that's that new one. And then it's got a 23 amp hour, 3.7 volt batteries uh, inside of it. 10 quarts of water is what it holds. And it says 90 hours of constant runtime up to 120 hours intermittent run, run time. Um, and so you can kind of see all the specs here. So I'll link it down below. I'm just doing highlights on this video. If there's any of these products that you're like, gosh, you got to check this out. I need to know if it's worth it. Maybe I'll pick some of these things up, do an in-depth review after I check it out, or at least a, a walk around and feature and spec overview and compare it to some other products. Let me know down in the comments. Um, I would love to hear and see uh, what you guys are thinking about this stuff. Next up, LiveScope Plus Ice Fishing Bundle LI. So we've actually known about this for a little bit of time. 
uh, but it was announced again at the iCast show. Uh, so this is the Live Scope Ice Fishing Bundle for those of you that ice fish. Um, this has the new screen. So it's the UHD 2 93SV screen. The previous model that they came out with last year, it seems like every year they come out with a new one. This model has the uh, the LiveScope Plus transducer in it. So it's not the LVS32. I know that they have both of them. This is the LVS34, so the LiveScope Plus transducer. It has the lithium ion battery. This is just a lithium ion battery. This is not a Life po 4 battery or an NMC battery. So not the best battery, but it is lithium nonetheless. So you're gonna get all the benefit of that lighter weight out of it. Um, and then the screen. So it is a 93 SV UHD2 which means that it's got a higher resolution. It's also got some of the new uh, um, uh, GPS capabilities in it. And then it's got Wi-Fi connectivity as well. So if you have a couple of these units, you can actually wirelessly connect the units to each other rather than having to run a cord to them. Um, I'll do a video just on what the, the difference between the UHD and the UHD2 so you guys can see it. Uh, in my mind, it's not worth upgrading if you already have the LiveScope Ice Fishing Bundle. Um, this is a great way to start because you're kind of getting everything that you need here. I'd probably swap out the battery because that battery is not going to last you um, like for a full day on the ice uh, if you don't have it plugged in and you're using it for a full day. So that is pretty exciting. That is uh, one of the new things that we're going to talk about. That's from Garmin. Another thing that I'm excited about, and I'm going to pick this up because I'm super excited about it. This is called the Weston Cam, the Weston Cam Escape Cam. So this is an underwater fishing camera. That's pretty cool. So it actually attaches to your line. You can see here, it's a super small, super lightweight design on it. It's a fully waterproof enclosure. It's obviously an underwater camera. This is not like our ice fishing cameras. You can see it's hooked up to the line that the person is fishing with. So that way you can actually see your bait as you're fishing. You can see the action of the bait and you can see uh, as fish are striking it, uh, which is can get you really cool footage, really cool memories, really a learning experience to be able to see um, how the fish are reacting to your bait. Uh, so that way, hopefully you can get better hookups in the future. Um, so that way you can understand that. Uh, what's really cool about it is it comes with a smartphone app. So that way you can actually, once you pull it out of the water, wirelessly look at the footage and share the footage straight from your phone on an app. So this is a really cool thing that I'm excited uh, to try out this year. It's full 1080p, 60 frames per second, 150 minute battery life, um, and it recharges um, on the go too if you want to. So super, super cool. I'm gonna check it out. I don't know how much it is yet. It still says coming, excuse me, coming soon. But once it does come out, I will, uh, I'll be sure to get it and show you guys and have some footage on it, but I'm really excited about this one. Let me know in the comments, any of this stuff that you're excited about, or if there was something new from the iCast show that you saw gear wise, that maybe I'm not talking about yet, uh, that you think I need to check out. I'd love to hear about it. All right, Angle uh, has had this out actually for a little while now. Um, I've got a couple of videos coming out on this. I've got a couple of them. Uh, so they came out with uh, last, I think it was last fall, they came out with their lithium ion rechargeable live bait aerator pump. So this same thing, except this is the XL version. So the XL version has a lot more output of air. So that's what this announcement is here. So you can see here the AP3 pump, which, which was their original one that they came out with last year. Still, this isn't like the OG angle pump that runs off of D batteries. That's still in existence, unfortunately. Uh, but they've replaced last year the lithium ion pump. This is my go-to air pump, the AP3 pump. Uh, this new one that they came out with um, a few months ago is the AP4 XL. So you can see it's got a longer battery life, 48 hour battery life. It can uh, pump out three STL a minute. I don't know the acronym of STL, but it has something to do with um, how much air it can pump out. Um, versus one and a half of the AP3. So it doubles that air output. So this is good for those people that are in 30 quart or larger uh, size live bait coolers. Um, if that way you don't need multiple pumps and you can make sure enough oxygen is getting into the water. Um, so you can see the difference in the batteries as three times the batteries. It has the same two year warranty and it comes with that two and a half inch hockey puck stone. This stone is awesome. Uh, if you're used to those little stones that normally come with aerators, 
Um, I usually throw them away and then uh, I buy like a hockey puck stone kind of like this, um, but it's off of Amazon. I think it's normally like 10 bucks or five bucks or something like that. I want, this thing is way better because of the design of it, your hose goes into the top. It's got a little bit of weight to it along with suction cup, sits on the bottom of your live bait cooler. This is way better. And it's actually built to have that increased airflow go through it. I hope that they sell these separately by themselves because I will be buying them and highly recommending them. But it is USB-C rechargeable. Um, I highly recommend this pump. Uh, again, check out the channel uh, coming up soon. There'll be a comparison video between the two and then kind of showing you um, how exactly this works. I do have a couple of these in my garage. All right, next up, Bubba Pro Series Smart Fish Scale. So at first I was like a fish scale, uh, but if you're like me, one of the things with fish scales is they always tend to be inaccurate. Like I could weigh a fish, pull on the thing a couple of times, reweigh the fish and it'll come up with a different number. They don't seem very accurate. And so one thing I'm excited about is this has a best in class accuracy of plus or minus 0.3%. It has a 60 pound weight limit and you can see here how it works. So you're holding it like a, uh, uh, a trigger grip type of thing. And then on the top, you can see it's all digital on the screen here. So you can see the weight of it, you can tell it where to add it. I think it has something like a hundred, a memory for a hundred fish that you can do. Uh, you can do automatic culling. You can do tournament mode. You can have multiple people use it and you can do side-by-side -side competitions where you each have your own um, five fish that you're keeping. This thing is incredible. However, it is not cheap. It's $229. Uh, it's not cheap, but it seems like it's gonna be very accurate. It's got that high weight capacity of 60 pounds. Um, the accuracy in all of those features that you would like to see. So three versatile operating modes, um, which is like a tournament mode, a competition mode, and one other thing. They also said that they have a phone app that it Bluetooths to, if you want to, where you can review all of the data via Bluetooth. Um, and then you can also enter online tournaments. I don't know if that's using Fish Donkey or some other platform. Um, I tried to look in the FAQ and the instructions and couldn't find it. Um, but that's something to know. So more to come on this. I'll probably uh, try to get my hands on this and test it out. I think this is something that's always really nice to have. It's a full waterproof body and a waterproof case. So it's gonna, you're, it's gonna hopefully be the last thing that you ever need uh, to have on your boat for weighing fish. And it's got the rechargeable lithium ion battery, uh, everything else that we've talked through. So this, this looks really excited. If you're excited about this, go ahead, drop it in the comments. Let me know about that. Um, otherwise, yeah maybe pick it up. I'll try to link all these down below too. Next up, we've got Garmin. This is the second thing on the list from Garmin. It's the Force Kraken trolling, trolling motor. Uh, so this is their, they had the Garmin Force out. Now this is the Kraken model. This is the new one that came out. It is a brushless trolling motor and it has the longer shaft lengths up to 90 inches in here as well. Uh, it comes in both white and black. Uh, the early reviews that I saw, Jay Siemens did a video on it uh, that I was watching uh, just last night. Um, and a few other people um, that are out there have, have had some uh, on-water experience with this. And they've said that it is absolutely phenomenal. One of the cool things um, with this is the remote that it comes with has additional capabilities on it as well. I don't know if it will show here um floating remote so that's nice if you drop it in the water it's got the wireless integration with your other uh chart plotters uh if you have a compatible chart plotter with it smartwatch integration so garmin's trying to do the ecosystem thing so garmin makes smartwatches. if you don't have one when you're looking to getting one or you already have one you can actually do integration with it it's got an anchor lock mode uh, so you can actually give it a precise gps coordinate it can get to it and then it will obviously stay put uh live scope cable management this is a big differentiator for this. Uh, you actually put the live scope cable up through the transducer pole. So no longer is it strapped on the outside and are you wrecking your cable? It goes through the pole. Um, and then on the bottom of it, you actually have a mount for your live scope transducer. How awesome is this? Uh, this is uh, first in class of its own, a very high end uh, trolling motor. There were several complaints about the original force that came out just around how it powered on smaller boats and it was really jerky along with a few other complaints. 
Uh, I've heard a lot of really good things about this one. And then you've got, it's probably the GT56 transducer along the bottom, uh, the UHD one that they have as well. So check this out if you're looking into a trolling motor. Next is PowerPole. PowerPole uh, launched their Move ZR, which is their trolling motor. And uh, I haven't seen any videos on this yet, uh, but what is supposed to be unique about this is they have taken uh, a part of trolling motor and they said, what are all the components that go into it? We're going to make our own and rebuild every component to have the highest end components for the best output possible. So they're truly looking at innovating in the space with research and development to create the best trolling motor out there. I can't wait to hear how other people like it. Um, I don't know, um, you know how much integration there's gonna be if you're a Garmin user with LiveScope like I am down the road. They do call out that they specifically right now will integrate in with uh, Lowrance and Simrad models, uh, but it doesn't say anything about Garmin. So it'll be interesting to hear about that. <clears throat> One of their big selling points is how silent the operation is. Since it is a brushless motor, they said they also optimize many of the other components to reduce even more noise. So it's it's totally silent, they say, when it's in the water and operating. It also has 30% more thrust and it's 30% more efficient than the industry leading trolling motors. Uh, this guy right here from a foot pound of thrust, I want to say is 100 foot pounds but I don't see it on here. They also have their anchor modes. The They have the follow a route compass heading, same as all of the leading manufacturers out there for a lot of the capabilities. And you can see their hybrid remote that they have here. Uh, so this looks pretty cool. They won in their class uh, for the trolling motors. Uh, so this is something definitely to keep an eye on if you're in the market for a trolling motor, might be worth looking at ultra lightweight, easy lift and assist, uh, lift assist deployment worth checking out. Next up is the Gale soft shell pullover. So this is not cheap to $130. <clears throat> this is from Blackfish. They were there. So this is one of the cold water, um, pieces of gear. This, I, I tried not to put a lot of the tackle and lures and those things in here, um, in much of the, uh, things that you would wear like clothing, but this one is incredible looking. Um, it looks super soft. Um, the reviews on it have been phenomenal. So check this out if you're looking for that cold weather pullover from Blackfish, a very reputable brand. I can't wait. I'm probably gonna pick one up this fall. Um, it may even work even in ice season in the, in the warmer days. So I might be checking this out. They've got a lot of different color patterns. Um, so check this out from Blackfish. Go miss misting and drinking bottle. So I thought this was kind of goofy, but then when I was thinking about it, I'm like, <clears throat> how many times are you out on the water, either in a boat, on a dock, in a kayak, or even just out walking around and you get really hot? Uh, you got a bottle of water here, plus it mists, which actually cools the air up to 30 degrees with that wet mist. So you can kind of see here in the pictures of uh, the misting action that it can do. Take a sip. So you can see it mists out of the top, cools the air up to 30 degrees. You can drink out of it like a normal water bottle. It's got one touch power button for the instant mist, two misting speeds, gentle and turbo. I thought this was kind of unique. Not something I would typically think that you would find at a fishing show, but I can see why they would do it. If you're out on the boat and you get really hot, uh, like this jogger here, this person sitting out in the sun, uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, so check it out. I don't know if it said $65, so not super cheap, but it does, it is rechargeable, um, which is kind of nice. I might pick one up just to see how it works. I might not. We'll see. Um, could be gimmicky. I'm not sure how well it works, but it was at iCast, and uh, it was something that won in a category. So figured I'd show it to you guys. Pretty cool. And last but not least is the pontoon tackle storage unit with ruler countertop. I don't know if this is the exact model that they had at iCast. They've got several different versions of this, but I thought this was pretty cool. Um, the, the idea of pontoons historically was they're not made for fishing. They're made, meant for leisure. And I think over the last several years, 
people have really shown that pontoons are actually great uh, boats for fishing out of. You can walk around, you can get to other sides of the boat, you got enough space in it. And so what this company has done, Boat Outfitters, <clears throat> is they've actually launched this add-in where you can actually put the storage unit into your boat, into your pontoon. So that way you have tackle storage, you have drawers, you have a top that you can clean on, you have rod racks on the side of it, you've got tool holders up top, it's all locking. So all of these uh, compartments lock, you bolt it down to your floor. Um, it's made out of a weatherproof, heavy duty material. So it's not gonna get worn away in the sun or the harsh conditions of out on the water. So I thought this was pretty cool. Obviously not cheap at all, but if you're one of those guys that your pontoon is your fishing machine, this could be the thing that you've been looking for because pontoons typically don't have a ton of the fishing accommodations in terms of storage and whatnot that you typically find on a fishing boat. Um, so this could be uh, something that's uh, very intriguing for you. So check this out if you would like. And that's it for today. So we're wrapping up right around the 30 hour mark on episode one. Please uh, share out the video. This will be available for replay. Um, it's available on all of the podcasting platforms once I figure out how to get it up there. This is a podcast, uh, Fishing Gear and Tech News, where we're going to be talking about fishing gear, um, the, the new tech advancements and announcements that are out there. You know, if there's drama in the industry, we may talk about it. If there's bans in certain areas, we may talk about it. Uh, we may talk about uh, ways just to improve the gear that you already have. So it's not always about buying new gear, but it's all around fishing gear and tech. We're not going to be talking about, um, you know, the best strategies and tactics for, you know, bobber fishing versus, you know, uh, using boards out on the water. That's not what this, this podcast is about. So please make sure if you're interested in fishing gear and tech, subscribe to the channel. If you're on YouTube, check it out on all the other podcast platforms, give it a like, uh, let me know down below what are other topics that you'd like to see coming up. This will be every Tuesday is my goal at 6 p.m. Central. There'll be some weeks that we don't do it. Some weeks I'll have to move it around. I'm looking to have some guests on the show as well within the fishing gear and tech space. So look forward to that. Thank you so much for watching today. And until next time, take it easy.